there and welcome to another episode of Game Discovery. I haven't done one of these in a little while, but I have here today Jurassic World Evolution, which uh, I was uh, happy to get a key to, and I've been playing it for about a week and a couple days at the time of this recording, which is literally the day before uh, this video should come out. If you just landed on this uh, review and you don't know what my channel is about, let me give you some context to how I'm reviewing this game. I tend to play games from a design perspective. Uh, I'm mostly interested in the sandbox aspect of these games, not so much in the management, though I was uh, getting into this game with the expectation that it was going to be, you know, management heavy, and uh, that turned out not to be the case, or at least not entirely. So let me first uh, tell you a little bit about, uh, well, what this game looks like. I mean, look at these graphics. Um, it's uh, the, it just everything is super detailed. The models uh, from not only the animals and the animations, those are just fantastic, but also just the, the grass, I think, is the th first thing that I saw that totally drew me in. And I, when, when I saw that uh, back in, in the Frontier event in London, it's like, okay, sure, yeah, that looks like, you know, like CGI, like they put together that for the trailer. Uh, I was later told that that wasn't the case. That was like actual in-game graphics, and I was able to confirm that as I was uh, playing this game. Uh, obviously, this video is in 4K, so if you have a, a big enough bandwidth, you can hopefully get all of that uh, juicy detail out of that. Um, the the trees also are incredible. The the buildings themselves and the the way the, the weather works, just everything is like really really pretty and eye candy. Uh, as far as the audio goes, uh, obviously the soundtrack is from the movie, and that's mainly why I'm not uh, showcasing it on this video because of uh, copyright uh, reasons. Uh, however, the dialogue is actually really cool. Uh, they have a, a lot of voice actors, and one of them is actually Jeff Goldblum. Okay, this is as good a place as any to begin. Yeah, you can uh, you can get your feet wet here, and you should, because diving into the deep end of the pool is where the big, angry, hungry things are. And uh, you want to be ready before you try that. So the way this works is you first start on an island. There's a cluster of uh, multiple islands that you unlock as you accomplish uh, different missions. The first island, uh, it comes in with some pre-built stuff. There's like a half a fence done and just some buildings. And you pretty much have to populate that with dinosaurs and start getting guests in. The, the goal of the game is to uh, have guests come into the park, give you a ton of money, uh, you keep doing research, and hopefully the dinosaurs don't escape and kill everyone. That's pretty much uh, what you're supposed to do. Um, when I first saw the first island, I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I didn't see any like sandbox options, so I was like, okay. I mean, there I can't design with some of these tools. That's great, the game looks nice, I, I can have fun with this. And you start getting these contracts. Uh, there's like three types of contracts that you get, science, entertainment, and security. And you pretty much unlock other islands as you complete more of these contracts. And all these islands have uh, buildings that you can only plop once per island and you can do research. So for example, you can send a helicopter to go find fossils and then when they come back, you can extract the DNA and, and synthesize it and create uh, new breeds of dinosaurs out of that. So that's pretty much how the, the game uh, sort of evolves. I am a little bit concerned about, you know, future playability. Uh, I was talking to Flox off camera about this, because pretty much once you just complete all the research missions and all, uh, sorry, all the research um, tasks and uh, all the expedition missions and all of those things, yeah, I mean, that's that's it. You're pretty much done. Um, you can, I mean, you can keep playing and refactoring uh, these parks over and over again uh, if, you, if you would like to do so. But uh, after playing the second island, which is the one that you're looking at right now, uh, by the way, the weather sort of changes on from island to island. So this one is uh, staged or basically based of a dusk sort of uh, time of day. It's all orangey. That's why it's not like a weird uh, LUD that I have going on. But it's, uh, this one had supposedly the challenge here is that the weather was much worse and indeed it was we have to build shelters to keep people from uh, you know flying off on hurricanes or getting attacked uh, by dinosaurs when they do escape which actually happens quite a bit in fact basically all these dinosaurs have uh, all these uh, metrics that uh, based on for example uh, you have uh, how much uh, grasslands uh, or uh, forest the area has do they have enough food do they have enough water is the place crowded with other animals do they not like 
the other types of animals. There's a lot of those things. Are there enough of my own type of animal? Um, those things will basically fluctuate from breed to breed. In fact, I, I, I incubated a couple of dinosaurs that I figured, okay, this is a big dinosaur. It's a uh, herbivore. And I'm just gonna unleash them. They're usually like docile for the most part, herbivores are. And apparently they were like really lonely and grumpy, so they didn't like each other. And they started trying to like break out of the fence because they just couldn't, <laughs> they couldn't be in the same cage together. Uh, and uh, sometimes even animals that do get together and, and they want like big populations don't get along. So uh, a couple times, things I did, and this was before I learned you can actually sell the dinosaurs to other parks. What I did is I'd send a, a team to tranquilize the animal and then pick it up with a helicopter and put it on the carnivore's cage and, you know, you know how, the, how that story ends. I don't have to explain it, but those uh, things are kind of funny. Uh, I also have unleashed a pack of velociraptors into the guests just to see what happens. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of videos on YouTube from people doing that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, it just uh, you can save the game and then do that and then revert the saving to where you left off and, and that way your park rating is not going to go down. Um, but the, here's, here's the cool thing. So after playing the second island and completing a few of the challenges there, I unlocked the third one, which is the one I was mostly interested in. And I didn't realize this until I actually unlocked it, which is a sandbox island. My story with the dinosaurs began here at Isla Nublar. This island is where I came to first question everything I knew, everything I held dear. Not because that what happened here was impossible, obviously it wasn't. This is uh, Isla Nublar, and uh, the Sandbox Island, it's pretty much what it sounds like. You have unlimited money, but uh, you can only access the things that you've previously research. So uh, you can only access certain breeds of dinosaurs that you spend money on and, and all the other islands, sorry. Uh, and then there's certain buildings that you, they don't do anything. So for example, you can't conduct any more research from that island because you know obviously you have unlimited money. However, this island is totally blank. So you start with nothing, just a monorail station that connects to the outside world. And then you can just do whatever you want. It's pretty big. I wish that you could turn every previous island into a sandbox island. I haven't found a button to do that. Maybe that's an option, but I, I couldn't find it. Uh, I looked for it and I couldn't find it. So maybe a future update will take care of that. Or maybe after I complete the entire game, I will do that. Because so far I've unlocked like four islands out of the, I think seven total islands or something like that. No, I'm entirely sure. Uh, but um, I mean, the sandbox mode also has a whole bunch of settings, just so you know. You can uh, alter the type of day, uh, the, you know, set it to daytime, dusk, or night. Uh, you can even change the ratio for or the weather, so how aggressive the weather is, or how often do dinosaur escapes, or uh, sabotage is, is another thing that actually happens. But in this one, I just left everything by default. I thought that was like uh, easy enough. And indeed, it was pretty easy, as long as you didn't start mixing dinosaurs that don't really want to be with one another. Uh, in fact, one thing that I highly encourage you to do is build double fences. As you see on this uh, sandbox island, I've been doing that quite a bit actually. And that uh, gives you some time because there's this one thing and I'm gonna get into the gameplay now. And it's the thing that I dislike the most from this game, which is the camera system. Every time you click on a building, it focuses the camera on that building. And it does it with like an ease in and ease out kind of movement. So it's really, it's really slow to even do that. All the time that you spend like zooming in and out, it's like you're fighting against the camera constantly and it gets really annoying really fast. Hopefully hopefully that's, uh, they, they will issue an update. At least just being able to turn it on and off would be more than enough. Now, in terms of gameplay, there's also a ton of similarities with uh, Planet Coaster. The, the way the paths work is exactly the same is I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's incredibly similar to what Planet Coaster uh, looks like and behaves like. Uh, you have some basic snapping, and you can do curves or straight lines. I guess Planet Coaster did this to some degree, but it does. The path sticks to the trains just perfectly. So if you have a steep hill, you will have a steep path, and some more often than not, you're kind of like fighting the terraforming quite a bit, even though you do have terraforming tools, which are pretty powerful, and I've been using them a lot. Uh, every time you put down a building. Uh, it will flatten out the area and it usually messes up <laughs> the, the path. So you kind of have to do the terraforming before you put down buildings if you want everything to look like nice and pretty and flat. There's, there's ways to go around that. Uh, and the more I've been playing the game, the more I try to avoid 
those types of situations, but um, it's certainly uh, something that uh, you can work around. Uh, in terms of landscaping, uh, you only have uh, a couple options there. You can do uh, forests and grasslands, and they behave like a brush, so you don't really have control of individual trees. You just paint trees. Uh, and then you can do grasslands, which are like lower uh, vegetation uh, too. So uh, dinosaurs want a little bit of both. The thing with uh, tall vegetation is that um, cars, like for example, rangers can't go through those. So you want to have a mix between grasslands and uh, forests so that uh, there is some pathways that uh, your team, uh, your maintenance team basically can uh, use to go into the different cages and perform different tasks. So let me ask, let me answer this question that I'm sure is going to come out in the, in the comments down below. Will you make a series of this game? Uh, I, I don't know yet. Um, it, and it's not because I don't want to. I think it's a really cool game, and it will definitely make at least a good uh, live stream, but uh, it's just time. It all comes down to that. So will will this game fit on my regular schedule? Absolutely, yes. Uh, and um, I'm going to see if I can somehow do a small, like, mini-series, and every time I say that, it turns out to be, like, 20 episodes, but I'll, I'll figure something out, and if not, a live stream at least once or twice so that you can actually see it and ask me questions, and I can show you with the game sort of in real time and in an interactive kind of way. The game uh, release is actually tomorrow, June 12th, and uh, I'm actually going to be at E3. Uh, Frontier was kind enough to invite me, so I'm going to be uh, covering uh, the event and probably putting together a small vlog of that whole experience uh, that that should be coming out on my channel in the next week or two. I still haven't done my PDXCon uh, coverage yet, but hopefully that's coming soon. So please give me just a second on that one. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for, for this uh, initial first look of uh, Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving this video a like. And if you're new to my channel and haven't already, uh, there's a big red subscribe button that you can click. And that way you're notified next time I post uh, any video at all. Uh, you should also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash especially if you want to see my... I guess, behind the scenes coverage of E3. And that's kind of like my most active social network side of YouTube. So if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going on with my channel, changes in schedule and, and things like that, definitely follow me on Twitter. Uh, but that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.